Hey guys, you know a great way to target big bass in the early spring when the A-rig and the jerk bait isn't working and you need to slow down is throwing a jig in a Texas rig and throwing it to cover like standing timber, logs, uh, bushes when they're in the right places, things like that. So when the water is in the high 50s, you know, maybe it's just hitting 60 degrees, the bass aren't moving up yet, they're in that kind of in between mode, maybe they're feeding a little bit, maybe they're just staging uh, and holding on these pieces of cover. Uh, throwing that Texas rig in the jig is a really good way to pick apart those pieces of cover and get those big bites. And I want to show you what I throw on my Texas rigs and my jigs and also where to find these fish. So let's check out where to find them. So when we're looking at a map, let's say Let's go to one of my favorite lakes, Lake Fork. And we've got lots of different creeks, lots of different areas to find fish. When you're looking for fish in the early spring, you're typically looking for uh, you know, mid sections of the creeks, secondary points before the fish go all the way in the backs of the creeks and into the warmest water on the, on the warmer days and start to spawn. Uh, but more importantly than that, when you're looking at the midsection of the creek and the secondary points, you want to look for creek channels. Now if we dive in deeper into a, a detailed map, like a Navionics map, and we're looking at the creek channels, what you're going to see is little bends in the creek channel. And those often mean, when you're looking at banks, those are the areas where bass are going to tend to hold, and especially big bass. that don't like to stray far from the protective deep water uh, and the heavy cover around the trees and the creek channels. They love to feed on those banks that have the bends on them. And oftentimes when you're really catching them good, they're gonna be on the, on, the, on the top of the ledge of the creek channel. They're not gonna be actually in it. Uh, so, but it's just, it's a highway and it's an excellent way for those bass to to hold around those comfortable areas, but also have access to the bank close where they can feed. So when we look at the, the stumps and the trees that are along those banks, those are the areas that you really want to target and pay attention to. There's you know tons and tons of trees in a lot of lakes, especially in a lot of East Texas lakes and other parts of the country that have a lot of flooded timber. It's hard to to pick apart those areas and really see, you know, where's the where the big bass are going to be. But when we look at the creek channel, and we take away the water and look at a map, we can see that. So those are the typically the areas where I catch the biggest bass uh, when they're getting in their pre-spawn or maybe just before that when the water's a little bit colder. And I love to throw a Texas rig and a jig on those trees in those key areas. So let's check out what I throw on my jigs and my Texas rigs. So on your bait selections, you want something that doesn't have a whole lot of action. The water's a little bit colder in the, in the early spring months, so you don't wanna have a, a real flappy action trailer. What I like to do is throw something that has, uh, doesn't have the, the curl tails, is mostly just straight and has maybe a little bit of movement, natural movement when it's on the bottom, maybe if there's some current in the water, but not something that has a lot of action to it. Um, one of the main reasons Cinco style baits are so great during the early spring is that is that reason, and that's something that I like to also Texas rig. I'll Texas rig this and even throw it on a weightless Texas rig or even a wacky rig next to these stumps. And a lot of times I'll go with a little bit lighter weight than I would in the post-spawn or summertime. I'll throw maybe a, a quarter ounce or three sixteenths ounce weight on the Texas rig so it sinks a little bit slower. Uh, it just, it's a more natural presentation. It seems like the bass in the early spring like that a little bit more. So that's a, that's a style that I'll use. Uh, and when I go to a creature bait, Creature baits are also good. They're a little bit more compact than the Cinco style. Uh, but again, a lot less action. So I love the beaver style or the, you know, the craws that don't really have a whole lot of action. Uh, there's an LFT flipper uh, and a jackal cover craw. Uh, they, they're real, uh, real similar. They don't have a whole lot of movement in their pinchers. It's just a natural, uh, free-flowing, uh, light action. And then I'll even throw 
the wacky rig or the flick shake style baits, uh, little tiny jig heads with the worm on it. Uh, and, and that always works well in the early spring. If the bite's really tough and you're just not getting bit on the Texas rig and the jig, uh, this slowly sinking by those standing trees, the stumps, the laydowns, that really works well. And typically on the jigs, I will uh, throw a, a chunk trailer, something that doesn't have a lot of movement, or I'll throw like the flipper style, the beaver style bait on there. I love this as a trailer uh, in the early spring as well. And you know, it's colors, just kind of go with, go with your gut on what the lake uh, conditions are, water clarity, uh, you know, bluegill, crawfish, those are, uh, crawfish are a great forage in the early spring. So um, I like to start out with a half ounce and, and go down from there if I'm not getting bit, uh, maybe to uh, three eighths or even a quarter, a real slow sinking jig. But typically if I'm having to go that light, then I'll go to the, the wacky rig or a weightless style stick bait worm with that. But sticking to those baits right there when, uh, when you're not getting bit on a moving bait and you have to pick apart the cover, uh, those, are, those are excellent, excellent baits in the early spring and they have uh, worked wonders for me over the years. But main thing, make sure you're finding those areas along the creek channels, the good banks, uh, that have that deep water close by uh, and, and the bigger the stumps the better really soak that thing down there when you see a really good uh, piece of cover or big round stump that's often where the biggest bass will be so i hope these tips help you guys and i will catch y'all later Hey guys, if you missed last week's episode Crazy. of Lake Fork Guy Fishing TV, make sure you oh, go man, check that out. And also the clip where I hook up There's with two fish at the same down. time. It's crazy. And if you want to stay more connected with Lake Fork Guy Fishing too. TV and me, make sure Barely you go look. like the Lake Fork Guy Fishing page on Facebook. And I've got some more product reviews coming up All this right. month, along with more this fishing action. So stay oh, tuned, guys, yeah. and I'll catch y'all later. I can drop back down again.